This is Tyler from Nelly Security, and in today's video, we are going to unbox these two Uniview Fisheye security cameras. Uniview's fisheye cameras come in two different resolutions. We have the 5 megapixel model and the 12 megapixel 4K model. There are a few differences between these two models, which we will talk about in this video, but for the most part they do have very similar specs. There's a lot to learn about these cameras, so let's go ahead and jump right in with an unboxing. So right away, just from looking at the boxes, you can tell that there is a considerable size difference between these two cameras. The 5 megapixel version is clearly a lot smaller than the 12 megapixel version. So the first thing we see when we open up this camera is this little baggie. This contains our drill template and paperwork such as our quick start guide and our waterproof guide. We also have this weatherproof grommet, our mounting hardware, and then we have the camera itself and our 12 megapixel model is very similar. We have our paperwork here, and then we have our camera, and underneath we do have our weatherproof grommet and mounting hardware. So here we have our two cameras side by side, and we can really see the size difference now. I mean, they are both pretty small, they both fit pretty nicely in the palm of my hand, but the five megapixel version here is clearly a lot smaller than the 12 megapixel version. So both cameras do have this 360 degree lens here in the front, surrounded by this black IR glass. They both have this plastic ring around the camera. The 12 megapixel camera has a, a larger ring, but these are just covers. The cameras themselves do have a durable all metal construction. It's just this outer cover that is plastic. If we look a little closer, we can immediately see a couple of other differences between these two cameras. We do have a built-in microphone here on the 5 megapixel version, but on this 12 megapixel version, we actually have three microphone holes. It's going to give it a larger omnidirectional field, whereas this 5 megapixel camera, even though it does have an omnidirectional microphone in it, it's going to be a lot smaller, and it's probably not going to pick up audio quite as well. We will test that here in a little bit. I'm actually going to bench test these two cameras. We'll take a listen to both cameras and see if those three microphones really do make a difference when it comes to audio quality. Another noticeable difference between these two cameras is this built-in speaker here. So you can do two-way audio straight out of the box with the 12 megapixel fisheye. By default, you can only do one-way audio with the five megapixel. However, you can connect this to an external speaker which brings us to the cables. Both cameras have nearly identical cables in their pigtails. However, you can tell that the 5 megapixel version does have two separate pigtails, whereas the 12 megapixel version has all of the cables contained in that one pigtail. So both cameras do have this standard RJ45 ethernet connection, as well as a 12 volt DC power connection. Additional cables include a BNC video out connection for a spot monitor, alarm connections for connecting this to an external alarm. And both cameras also have audio in and out connections. The obvious difference being the five megapixel version only has these wires and you have to wire the microphone or speaker in yourself. Whereas the 12 megapixel version actually has these female connectors so that you don't actually have to wire the audio hardware yourself. One connection that is available on the 12 megapixel model but not on the five megapixel model is this RS485 connection for connecting this to a remote control for the PTZ views. All right, let's go ahead and take the covers off of these cameras and take a look underneath. The covers are super easy to remove. On the five megapixel version, you have this lock and open symbol on the side. So you simply rotate it and the cover pops right off. On the inside, you can see that we have our installation holes for screwing our camera into place. You can also see the single omnidirectional microphone a little bit better. And we also have this little compartment here, which contains a micro SD card slot, as well as a reset button. These cameras can hold more internal memory than most other cameras uh, with a limit of 256 gigabyte micro SD card. Then to replace this plastic ring, you just click it back into place and you're good to go. For the 12 megapixel version, instead of twisting the cover, you simply push in on this little button and the cover just slides right off. 
Again, we have a better view of the microphones under here and they are labeled one, two, and three. And just like the five megapixel version, we do have our compartment here for the micro SD card slot, as well as the reset button. I will point out that since these are just standard Phillips head screws and you don't need a special hex key or anything like that, and since the covers come off so easily, I would recommend installing these cameras in a place that is out of reach. And that's it for the unboxing. I'm gonna go ahead and get our test bench set up and we can take a closer look at some of these features. I now have these cameras pulled up here on the web interface. They are set up at our test bench in our warehouse. For now, I just wanna test out a couple of the features as well as checking out the audio functions. So we have our five megapixel version and here we have our 12 megapixel version. One difference I do wanna point out between the 12 megapixel and the uh, five megapixel cameras is in this intelligent event menu. With our 12 megapixel camera, we do have access to this heat map as well as line crossing and intrusion detection. So we can set up some recording events there. With the five megapixel version, if I head into the intelligent event menu, you can see that we only have heat map. We do not have line crossing or intrusion detection. So if we want any kind of recording events, uh, we are going to be limited to this basic motion detection as well as audio detection and just these uh, basic events. But for now, let's head into video and audio and we will click audio. And I just wanna see what these cameras are set to by default. So we have an input gain of 128, noise suppression is off. So here's our five megapixel version with the one singular omnidirectional microphone. Let's see what this sounds like. So it's pretty loud. There's definitely a lot of background noise. Um, there wasn't really anything happening close to the camera. So I'll have to go out there in a second and speak into it. But for now, let's change some of these settings because that was pretty loud. I might want to turn this down to maybe 90 and turn on noise suppression. Let's head into our 12 megapixel camera and see what this sounds like. And again, this does have those three uh, omnidirectional microphones instead of the one singular. All right, now that immediately sounds much better. We can actually distinguish some of the voices that are far off. Uh, we still can't really make out what they're saying, but it's not nearly as harsh and loud of a sound. The background noise is not nearly as invasive. Uh, I might still wanna turn, off, turn on noise suppression just to see what that does to the audio. Yeah, now there's virtually no background noise at all. So I would say those three microphones do make quite a bit of difference when it comes to audio quality. This 12 megapixel camera is much clearer, at least when it comes to uh, distant audio. Now I'm gonna go out there and speak directly into these microphones and see what it sounds like close up. All right, this is the five megapixel camera with the one singular microphone. I'm testing the audio, and now I will go switch over to the 12 megapixel camera and we'll see what that one sounds like. And I'm now speaking into the 12 megapixel fisheye camera with the three omnidirectional microphone. And we'll now go see if this makes the audio any clearer. All right, yeah, this 12 megapixel camera with the three microphones is clearly much higher quality in audio than the five megapixel version. But at the end of the day, you know, even if you're not a fan of either of these microphones, both cameras, again, come with that uh, audio in and out connection. So you are able to connect your own external microphone to this if you need to. All right, that's enough bench testing. Now we're actually going to check out a live install of one of these fisheye cameras right here in our warehouse. We have this installed on the ceiling right there in the center of the room. And since installation height is important when installing a fisheye camera like this, we do have this mounted to this pole mount. If we just had it mounted directly to that ceiling beam up there, the image probably would not look as good as it does. And here we are at our camera's live view. Now we can see pretty much the whole warehouse here on this fisheye lens, uh, and we have a pretty big warehouse. But here we can see all four walls. We have the entrance here, our receiving area, and all these different warehouse shelves. It's pretty crazy that from this one camera, we have this huge field of view and we can see everything that's going on in this warehouse. 
Now again, we have our 12 megapixel version installed here in our warehouse. As we get to a feature that is present here in the 12 megapixel version, but not present in the 5 megapixel version, I will let you know. Now let's talk about some of the ways that we can manipulate this live view. First, we have the preview mode menu over here. As you can see, the original fisheye image is currently selected, but we can also change this to a 360 degree panoramic view. And as we do, we have the full panoramic view down here. And right here we have a de-warped version. And I can click in that window and drag around to change what part of the image I'm seeing. Or I can click on this little window down here and drag it to wherever on this panoramic view I want it to be focused. We also have a 180 degree panoramic view. This just splits that panoramic view in half. So we have both sides of the warehouse present here and if I don't like the way this is positioned, I can drag this around to where here we have the front of the warehouse is in focus up here and the back of the warehouse is in focus down here. Finally, we have our various PTZ views. We have a 3 PTZ split view, a 4 PTZ, 6 PTZ or 8 PTZ split view. And I can manipulate these PTZ views just like I could the panoramic view. I can click in there and drag wherever I want this image to be focused. Or I can click here on this window and drag it around the fisheye view. With this I can also zoom in using my mouse wheel and zoom out. And as I do you can see this window over here and our fisheye view gets bigger and smaller. Now here is the main difference between the 5 megapixel and the 12 megapixel fisheye cameras. With this 12 megapixel camera, I have a preview mode, but I also have an operation mode. With the 5 megapixel camera, I only have one fisheye menu. The difference here is as I'm messing around with these preview modes on the 12 megapixel version, or the various fisheye modes on the 5 megapixel version, it's not actually changing the way the camera operates. Let me show you an example. If I come over here to our panoramic view and click start recording, I can click and drag around on this camera screen and manipulate the view all I want, but it's not actually affecting the way this camera is recording. So even though I was in panoramic mode moving the camera around, my recording is just this static fisheye view. But if I come in here and I change this operation mode to panoramic, and then come in here and do a local recording, we can see that the actual operation of the camera has changed. Therefore, it's not recording the standard fisheye view, it's actually recording this panoramic view here. This concept is going to come in handy when I show you how to add this to your NVR here in a little bit. But just keep in mind, this is only available with the 12 megapixel version. With the 5 megapixel version, fisheye is the only operation mode, and therefore you can only change the preview mode. So just to sum all that up, the preview mode over here changes how you experience the live view, but it doesn't actually change anything about how the camera operates. Operation mode, on the other hand, will change how the camera operates and functions, which will affect how it is added to an NVR, and it will affect any NVR or SD card recordings. Let's go ahead and jump into the setup menu, and I will show you a couple more features with regards to preview versus operation mode. First, if we head into our video and audio settings, you can see that here on our 12 megapixel version, we have our fisheye video settings, but we can also adjust separate video settings for our 4PTZ stream and for our panorama stream. You can see that even though we have the full 4000 by 3000 12 megapixel image available on the fisheye and panorama view, on the 4PTZ split view, we can only go up to 1080p. All right, now I'm going to actually show you how to set this camera up on your NVR, but first there are a couple of things to keep in mind. We do have two different types of NVRs in our Uniview product line. We have our full 12 megapixel NVRs that range from 8 channel to 64 channel, but we also have our light 8 megapixel NVRs which range from 4 channel to 16 channel. So if you have a 12 megapixel fisheye for instance, you won't be able to record the full 12 megapixel resolution on our light NVRs. However, even if you have the 5 megapixel fisheye, there still will be some benefits for you choosing a 12 megapixel NVR. The reason for that is our 8 megapixel NVRs do not have full functionality when it comes to fisheye controls and de-warping. 
We will talk more about those differences when we actually get to the NVR interface. But for now, just know that I am using our 12 megapixel 8 channel NVR for this demo. So we can see that we already have this fisheye added. We also have four additional channels from our PTZ. In fact, as I come in here and change this operation mode to PTZ, watch how the channels populate on the TV screen behind me. And if we come in here to our NVR, we can see that we now have these four channels and we, these actually function as actual PTZs. So I can use the PTZ controls here on the screen or here on this side panel to move the camera around and get the exact configuration that I'm looking for. So let's go ahead and set up, we'll click on cameras and you can see that we have our fish eye camera here and the four PTZs. It's all the same IP address because it's all the same camera, but this NVR again is treating it as though it were five separate cameras. Now to add this camera, you would come over here to auto search and find the camera in question, which is this IP address .88. And you can see here that we have five cameras available because we are in PTZ mode. If I were to come back in here and go to regular fisheye mode and click auto search, scroll down to .88, you can see that we now only have one camera available. Now that we have this camera added to our NVR as well as the various PTZ views, let's go ahead and jump onto the HDMI interface and we will see everything we can do straight from the NVR. And here we have our fisheye camera. Notice that here on the 12 megapixel NVR, we do have these fisheye mode functions, which just like on the web interface, let us switch to these different views, like our 360 panoramic view. I can click and move this around just like I can on the web interface. We also have our 180 degree panoramic view and our various PTZ preview modes. And again, we can have up to eight different PTZ views and I can click on this image here and drag them around so I can focus one on Jarrell here, put another one there on Jared's desk. I can grab one to throw over there at the entrance of the warehouse. You get the picture. Just keep in mind that this is only changing the display mode. As I mentioned earlier, these de-warping modes change how we experience the fisheye view, but it's not actually changing how the camera operates. So if I were to exit our fisheye controls and go into playback, we can see that nothing in the last couple of minutes has actually changed on the playback, even though we were messing around with the different views. However, even when we are in playback here, we can open fisheye mode and activate these panoramic views or PTZ views to de-warp these images as they're playing back. So this is not real time right now. This was just a couple of minutes ago, but I can also go to say two o'clock this morning and we can check out that 30 foot IR range here. Even though this was recorded at two o'clock this morning, I can still interact with this fisheye view through these de-warping methods. I can also go into my PTZ modes here. So when the camera is in fisheye operation mode, we are able to still manipulate these views during playback. Let's go ahead and change the operation mode from fisheye to PTZ. To do that, we're going to go back to our menu and we're going to click here on this fisheye menu. We'll click edit and change the mode to fisheye plus four PTZs. With these boxes selected, those four PTZs are going to be enabled on those four different channels. So when I click apply and head back to my live view, we can now see that I have five channels populated by this camera. We have our fisheye view up here and our four PTZs. Now each of these PTZs act like a completely different camera since they are on different channels. I can do anything with these five channels that I would be able to do with five individual cameras. So that's a really cool feature of these fish eyes. But here's the difference that I want to point out. If I want to move these PTZs around, I have to go into the PTZ controls because the NVR is treating this as if it were an actual PTZ. So to move it, I can pan, I can tilt, and I can zoom just like I could on a regular PTZ camera. Note that even though this is our 12 megapixel fish eye, when we go into the PTZ controls, each of these channels only records in full HD 1080p, also known as two megapixel.
So there is going to be a bit of quality reduction, but that's not a problem because even when we are recording these four PTZ modes, we do still have our full 12 megapixel fisheye mode here. You can see that here on our four individual PTZ modes, we do not have fisheye controls. So we can't actually manipulate the PTZ camera as we could a fisheye camera. And because of that, if we come in here to our playback menu and watch just the last couple of minutes, you can see that the fisheye menu is grayed out and it's moving around right now because it was moving around at that time. So the PTZ channels only record movement if movement is happening. I can't come in here after the fact and move this PTZ around because the NVR is not treating this like a fisheye camera, it's treating it like a PTZ. However, since these are on different channels, I can come in here and select my fisheye and for the last couple of minutes, hit play. I can still manipulate this view just like normal. So adding these extra PTZ views or this panoramic view doesn't actually mean we're going to be missing out on anything happening in this camera's wide field of view. We will still have access to the full fisheye image through this first channel. A big difference to keep in mind between the 8 megapixel NVR and the 12 megapixel NVR is that only the 12 megapixel version is able to display these de-warping views directly from the NVR's live interface. The lighter 8 megapixel NVRs do not have these fisheye functions. You can still add your fisheye camera, but you won't be able to de-warp it in real time or during playback. However, even with the 8 megapixel NVRs, if you log into the web interface, you will still have access to the fisheye de-warping controls. You just won't have it available to you on the NVR's HDMI interface. Well, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something about our Uniview fisheye cameras, and if you still have any questions about these cameras or about anything else, feel free to contact us anytime. We're always happy to help. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a like, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us across social media so you never miss another security-related video. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time.